Hello? Anyone out there? I have a show to do. And I want to go home. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. So glad to see you all once again. And if you are new here, you've picked a great episode to jump back into because this is the show where we talk about each and every episode of a show or a cartoon that we grew up on as kids. And today we're beginning to talk about the second season of Superman, the animated series, episode by episode. If that sounds like something that you might enjoy, then please hit the subscribe button and the like button while you're down there. That's the one with the thumbs up because we've got some great content on its way. Like today, where we talk about the two-parter Blast from the Past as the second season series premiere, which originally aired on September 8th and 9th, 1997. The Phantom Zone. Believe it or not, we're looking through to another dimension. I think this episode is a great way to start off the second season. There's a lot of elements that have been initially established in the first season that are now being paid off or being built on or, or expanded even more. The first season was a great introduction to Superman and Metropolis and the world and, and Krypton and all those elements. And now this season seems like it's on track to start building on some of those and and again it seems like they're bridging the gap getting into the justice league a little bit more we'll talk all about that right after our 60 second brainiac bomb brand new i do have to thank jason t clark who suggested not using a joker bomb for the superman episodes but doing something a little different and brainiac was one of the suggestions so we have a brand new 60 second countdown bomb by Brian Brainiac to see if I can make it through. Star Labs discovers a hidden compartment in Superman's ship that brought him there and they pull this out and they find a projector that that connects them to the Phantom Zone, another dimension. And so uh, they, in, in the process of trying to tweak that, they free this monster. But Superman goes out, tries to save the monster and, and put him back in there. And then, he, then a woman is inside of there saying that she's Mala and she's been locked up and, and her sentence is over and it's time to be freed. So Superman goes to Fortress of Solitude, goes to ask Brainiac <laughs> who and how she got there and what uh, the deal is. So he goes back and tells her this whole story that Mala and Jaxor were on Krypton trying to take over and they got sentenced uh, into the Phantom Zone. Her only 20 years, him for, for life because he was the mastermind of the whole situation. So uh, Superman decides that it's only fair to free her. She, he frees her and he says, but on one condition, you got to help me protect the planet. We got to do good. So he tries to train her and takes her out on the town. She takes it a little bit too far and she wants to to uh, uh, be able to rule the planet with Superman. And Superman doesn't like this. He says, that's not how it works around here. So she... I didn't even get through the first part, uh, first episode. Uh, wow. She takes the projector and frees Jaxor and is showing him about the town. Now we go into part two. Brainiac shows Professor how to build another Phantom Zone projector, but Professor's having a little bit of trouble getting it to work because he doesn't have the right the right crystal that uh, to use that. So uh, Batman or Batman, Superman and Jaxor and Mala go into battle and they're fighting each other and they find out that uh, Superman cares for Lois Lane and and those elements of his humanity that are there and so they. Uh, uh, Superman brings crypt. Uh, they, they capture Lois Lane, kidnap her, and they take her away. And uh, Superman puts on a suit and he gets the the uh, Krypton uh, Kryptonite pieces and goes towards them to try to fight them. And instead, he gets locked into the Phantom Zone and uh, they smash the projector. But then they're able to take the Kryptonite and because of a radioactive tracing ability that is on the uh, Superman suit that Lois Lane told them about, this is getting really confusing. They're able to lock onto him and free him from there by using the kryptonite from the broken projector and they free him and he goes to battle and they fight and they eventually get uh, Jaxor and Mala locked up. I think some pieces I missed in that. Whew, that's a detailed episode. This is a lot to absorb. So before I dig too far into this episode, I just want to say that it's been really interesting in jumping back and forth between Batman and Superman because it is very apparent how different Superman 
the animated series and Batman the animated series really are. I mean, we we know that and you look at it and the tone of it's different and the feeling of it's different and Batman is a very different hero than Superman. But you would think that the, these two shows made by the same producers, made by the the same writers and, and a lot of people that, that worked on the same shows, same voice actors in, in some cases. But it is such a different tone and such a different feeling watching this. And I find myself as I review these episodes of really having to reset my mind and look at the episodes for what they are and not comparing them one over the other. Obviously, I'm a big Batman fan and I find myself enjoying the Batman shows just simply because it's Batman and not able to connect as much on a hero level with Superman. And I don't say that as a bad thing because I know it's just a matter of preference, but Superman is such a different hero. And I think what they do well in the animated series overall is they really capture Superman's essence and the difference of Superman in contrast to Batman and create this whole different world, these entirely different stories and scenarios that they put Superman in that would never work with, with Batman. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in this episode because it became very apparent in this episode, but it's just, it's, it's an interesting note. And I think it's, it's to the credit of the producers and the writers that they did such a good job of creating two shows that are so dynamically different, even though they exist in the same universe. And I'm particularly excited to now go back and watch the crossover episodes where Batman and Superman were featured in each other's series. Astounding. I could spend a career studying any one of them. So there's a lot of things that are that are introduced or built upon in this episode. One is the Phantom Zone, which is a, a huge part of the Superman story and comics, and, and it's a a neat connection to some of his history on Krypton. It's a little wonky that that with all the studying and all the, the dissecting that Star Labs and Professor Hamilton have been doing, that they never noticed this hidden compartment in the ship. There seems to be a compartment in here that I haven't noticed before. <laughs> I guess that's why it's a hidden compartment. And then to find, by happenstance, this phantom zone projector and being able to then all of a sudden automatically know how to use this alien technology to be able to connect to the phantom zone. But of course they don't use it well because they end up freeing this monster by trying to adjust the picture quality. I think he said, I do wish the image were clearer. We also get a deeper look at the fortress of solitude, which gets its name also in this episode when professor describes what it is for Superman. Can I help you? If anyone deserves their own Fortress of Solitude, it's you. Fortress of Solitude? But with that, did I miss somewhere where Brainiac is connected to the Fortress of Solitude as a way of giving Superman the information about Krypton? It's a neat device and it's a neat use of Brainiac, but it must just be his computer intelligence i'm assuming because he's obviously not evil welcome to krypton tell me about mala one moment please but it's a great way of getting some information and through this episode getting more information about krypton and some of the history and i'm not a big fan always of flashbacks but i think that this little snapshot of what was happening on krypton with Mala and Jaxor is kind of important and it, and it kind of, again, got to show a little bit more of a glimpse of Krypton that we haven't been able to see before. Brilliant warriors each stood together in service to the council for years until the thirst for power corrupted Jaxor's mind. And, and maybe I'm a little rusty on my Krypton history, but it felt a lot like the story that they were telling about Jaxor wanting to take over the planet. And I think he was even a general, but I feel like that path was the story of General Zod. So it brings up the question, just like we were talking about in the Cape and Cal conspiracy in Batman the Animated Series, I don't know why Jaxor is not... General Zod, why they have, maybe they were holding off to introduce General Zod later or some other reason that I'm not aware of as to why Jaxor for this episode is not just General Zod. The council has grown weak. 
Krypton needs a strong leader to reclaim its former greatness. And I am that leader. Now, I did have to look this up. In the comics, Jaxor is an actual character in the in the comics, but I guess he's more of a mad Kryptonian scientist than a militia general army leader. And in fact, there's there is a storyline that that I learned of where Jaxor and General Zod did team up to engineer a race with Flash and Superman, which seems odd. I see great possibilities for these beings under my guiding hand. And this brings me to one of the the one of the stark differences between Superman as a character and Batman. This type of story, I feel like never could have been told in Batman the Animated Series because the character of Superman is so trusting and so and so much always sees the good in people and wants to give people a chance, it is not tarnished by the harsh realities of the world, that he is almost a little too trusting. That here we have somebody that's locked in the Phantom Zone crying out for help. Obviously had been in prison for something. I serve my sentence. Where is the council? And Superman chooses to let her out. And not just let her out, but wants to help train her to help him protect the planet and be another super woman to, to help do the good that he's doing. Not acknowledging the fact that perhaps she's not that way. If this was if this same setup was presented to Batman, I feel like his way of handling it would have been doing a lot more investigation to see if she really is reformed and if she's different and pulling her out and putting her in in some other lockup or in some other quarantine and less apt to just immediately trust her. And 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 again, I think it's just a difference and I think it's neat that these that the writers of Superman versus Batman take these stories and go, this story could exist with Superman and we can, we can set up these, this is how Superman would react or Superman has a very different voice in these episodes than Batman ever would. But you have to understand there's a condition on your staying here. You can't ever use your powers to hurt people. Which I think is a good thing because this is the type of story that I've been wanting to see with Superman because these are his equals. This is other Kryptonians that have the same powers, the same strengths that he does, but are still learning about them, still getting used to how to use them, and just his experience, not just his strength and his abilities and flying and, and heat vision and x-ray and all those sorts of things aren't what wins him the fight, but his experience of using them and his and the humanity that comes into play of doing the right thing versus them that have no constraints. That I will follow in Superman's tradition of just rule with a fair hand. But one thing that the Batman the Animated Series has done to me is now watching Superman, because it's the same voice actor, I have a hard time watching Perry White and not just hearing Scarface. I'm paying a room full of crack reporters and not one has a clue where Jaxer and Mala could be. And I feel like in this episode and moving forward that that, that we've now really are, are starting to shape Lois Lane into a really cool character. I think Lois Lane is is a really great character in the comic universe and, and has certainly evolved a lot over the years, starting out as just a damsel in distress and starting out as, as somebody that just for Superman to be in love with and, and rescue all the time. But I think, and I could be wrong, but I think the movies in the 70s really kind of shaped her more as, a, as an independent character and a strong female presence in the storylines. And certainly that is getting mirrored in this episode that I love the strength that she offers and is not just a... Uh, yeah, there is some still Superman having to rescue Lois Lane, but she's got, but she is a very strong character and a very uh, brave character that runs straight into danger and also uh, has some great little quips and one-liners. It must hurt your fingers clamping down on my throat like that. I live. So when it comes time to rank this episode, it's a really enjoyable episode and I feel like the second season really starts off with a bang or a blast. And like I said, it is some of the complaints that I had about the first season was it was a lot of setup and a lot of 
helping us get into the Superman world and, and maybe even just changing our mindsets a little bit from Batman to Superman being a completely different series. But this episode is really strong. It's got great battles. It's got great story. It moves the characters forward really well. So for all those reasons, it falls at the number three spot of my favorite episode so far. It falls just below the main man. And even though I'm personally not a huge fan of Lobo or the anti-hero kind of characters, he makes that episode a lot of fun. And, and it, it really kind of propels the Superman series into this great, wonderful sci-fi element that I really enjoy. And this episode has a little bit of that, but I think Lobo as a character just adds so much flavor to that episode. But it does beat out Fun and Games, which I, I feel like I may have prematurely ranked that episode a little bit higher than maybe it should have been. Only because that episode, I think, got, got favorited in my list because... It reminded me so much of Batman. That felt like a Batman story. And, and the ranking is accurate because I try to rank these based on when I watch it, how I felt, where I felt that it could be placed. And I'm sure if I went back and watched all these, these cartoons again, they'd fall differently on the list, which may be a, a future episode. But I think that this episode does beat out fun and games as far as a Superman episode because it has such a different tone and the story fits what Superman needs. Oh, so close. So my question for you today, why do you think that Jaxor is not General Zod in this episode? I get that Jaxor is a character in the comics, but why didn't they save him and make him more like he is in the comics, like a mad scientist, and left this to be General Zod? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed watching my review of this episode, then please click the thumbs up button down below. And if you want to see more content like this, we're reviewing each and every episode of the second season of Superman the Animated Series. And if you don't want to miss an episode, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Because this Thursday, we're going to be talking about the second episode, Prometheon. So you don't want to miss that. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Andy Canode, and I'll see you soon.